All right, so let's look at some more pair trades that we could do here. Uh, we could do uh, what's called a crude oil pair trade, where we're trading the spread between West Texas Intermediate and Brent. Two different types of crude. I don't pretend to be an expert in crude oil, but one is kind of thicker or whatever, depending on where they pull it out of the ground. It's got different um, characteristics. So when it's uh, cracked into its each individual components of the fuels and the diesel fuels and heavy oils and jet fuel, whatever it may be, um, you get different uh, kind of values from that because the valuation of jet fuel is higher, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. We're not going into complex details. That. If you want more information on that, go and find an expert on Google. Um, if you want that kind of background, that makes sense to, to look out for that information if that's what, something that interests you. But what we're interested in as traders is how the relationship between these two works and how it operates. So if all of a sudden West Texas Intermediate is flying to the upside, but Brent isn't, that may well be a supply issue, perhaps with West Texas Intermediate. Perhaps West Texas Intermediate, WTI from now on, I'll say, save me saying that all the way through, is struggling to get it out of the ground. Perhaps there's a security issue, perhaps whatever it may be. So you're trading on, you're stripping out, basically when you're pair trading, you're stripping out all the fundamentals of oil and you're stripping out that one thing that you think is affecting the price. As we did when we look back at Tesco and Sainsbury's, Tesco's flying. We're stripping out all the factors of supermarkets, but we're just purely trading the management of Sainsbury's to catch up with the management of Tesco's. If we're trading West Texas WTI versus Brent, we're stripping out all the aspects of demand of oil and purely trading that single thing that's causing WTI to be to be higher, whether that is a supply issue, a security issue, whatever it may be. And the same with a UK 100 in Germany. We're stripping out, we talk about the day trading perspective of it and the volatility of one compared to the other. Uh, DAX is flying, FTSE is catching up slowly. We're stripping out all the economic influence because it affects them both. And we're purely trading what has caused that disparity, which is the aggression of one, maybe the lack of liquidity in one compared to the other. So this is all we're doing in pair trading. We're stripping out mutual um, affecting influences and just trading the raw aspects. So gold and silver would be another one. Let's go back to this FedEx and UPS, uh, UPS example. You know, they all have the same things. They all have the same costs in terms of employees. And so we talked about that in the previous video. Go check it out if you haven't checked it out already. But perhaps UPS has got a contract. So in other words, they're doing well from the contract, but we're assuming that FedEx is gonna be more aggressive in getting contracts. So we're stripping out everything that affects them both and purely trading that. Now, talking about stripping out stuff, and don't worry, I'm not gonna strip myself for this video. You have to subscribe to see that. Just kidding, by the way. Uh, we can strip out things from the indices. So let's say, for example, we wanna trade the FTSE 100, right? But we don't want to have the influence of Vodafone in there. We think Vodafone's a big influence, or BP, let's use Vodafone as an example, it's got a big influence on the FTSE 100, and we just want to strip that out. So we are going to then buy the FTSE 100, we're going to go long the FTSE 100, and we're going to go short VOD. Now, what does that do for us? That basically says we are trading the FTSE 100 without Vodafone. Perhaps there's a reason for that. Perhaps Vodafone is, I've been absolutely flying. Yeah, absolutely flying. And for whatever reason, and it's done a, and it's done a really uh, help the FTSE to push to new highs. Um, and we think it's great. But we also think now that perhaps we want to strip out that because we think that the FTSE is still going to outperform. But Vodafone now may struggle because it's come a long way, whatever. So we can now trade the FTSE without the influence of Vodafone. Obviously, we're going to have to go into detail of how much position size we're going to take in terms of uh, you know how many pounds, uh, how much contract size of that, or how many CFDs of that, versus how many CFDs of that. That's purely down to a mathematical indicator, knowing what the weighting of Vodafone is with the FTSE 100, and then working out the position size of both. But ultimately, we can now trade the FTSE without Vodafone in. And we can go further, we can say, I don't want BP in it, or I do want this, and I do want that one. So we can kind of fine tune what we're doing. Same with the NASDAQ. We might think that Apple is ridiculous in the NASDAQ now, overvalued, but we will still want to trade the whole momentum of tech. So we can strip out Apple by shorting Apple and buying the NASDAQ, or vice versa. You know, we can hedge ourselves by saying, listen, I want to buy 
at Apple because I think it's doing really, really well. Um, but I don't want it to be, I, I still want to make some money if the rest of tech falls low. I think, I think Apple's going to outperform the majority of tech uh, in the NASDAQ 100. So I will buy Apple and I will short the NASDAQ. And that is basically giving me a kind of protection that if Apple gets affected by tech struggling, that I'm still, then that's fine, I'm, I'm, I'm hedged. But if Apple outperforms the rest, I'm gonna make money. So that's kind of thing what you're looking for with pair trading is correlations. It's slightly safer, nothing's safe with trading at all, but it's, sometimes it can be slightly safer because you're dampening the oscillations of each movement. If you're pair trading, you know, Facebook against Twitter or Twitter against Snapchat or something, you know, they're, they're quite volatile stocks themselves. The ratio, um, you know, if the whole of tech moves up, you're not going to make that much money or lose that much money depending on your position, but you're only going to make it if one of the moves out of sync with the other, which can give you a false sense of security as well. You've got to be careful with your risk management with that. You've got to kind of say, okay, even though I'm trading mean reversion and I expect it to come back into line, if it goes too far, it, in, in theory, it looks better because the ratio is moving out. I still need to have risk parameters in place to say, hey, you know what? Perhaps the correlation is broken now. Um, it's not. It's not working uh, as like the bond as the bond um, stock market correlation is kind of broken. That used to be completely inversely correlated. Now, not so much. Um, as you'll see. So at some point you have to say, listen, the correlation is not working. I'm going to pull this plug on the trade. So it's important to have still that risk management strategy in place. Perhaps you do layer into the trade, but at some point you've got to cut it and say, listen, enough's enough. It's not working. Let me move on. But it's a great strategy to have in your arsenal, whether you're a trading uh, intraday and you're trading kind of the intraday movements of some of the correlated stocks that's quite a nice way of doing it or whether you're trading swing trading and you're trading you know earnings surprises on one versus the other perhaps there's a delay of a couple of weeks of earnings between the two and and they seem to have moved but one's moved more than the other but you still think it's going to be caught up anything like that loads of loads of opportunities it's only really how your mind can work and it's a very popular thing one last thing very popular with hedge funds kind of really where they got their name from is they're hedging their positions. They'd always have a market neutral approach. Well, broadly speaking, that was what they would have a market neutral approach where they would, you know, kind of have uh, stocks, a basket of stocks, and then they would hedge themselves off with a short on the index, short futures position on the index, or whatever it may be. So they're dampening off the, the movement, but they're stripping out what they think is the influencing factor in that valuation of the stock or the indice or the commodity.